Welcome back, and it's time for our second hot topic. I want to take a look at the state of play in the Nigerian aviation sector. And I've been joined by Ademi Lola Oyewale Odunere, a.k.a. Lola. He's an airline captain. Good morning to you, Lola. Very good morning to you, madam. Well, Thanks for having me on your show today. Good to have you. Well, Captain Ademi Lola Oyewale Adunjuri, also known as Lola, uh, is an international airline captain. His passion for aviation and daring exploits led him to achieve a groundbreaking feat. In 2017, he made history as the first African pilot to accomplish a solo flight around the world in a single-engine light aircraft. Well, this historic journey took him across more than 15 countries on five continents, you know, showcasing his determination and resilience to break barriers to achieve a long life vision. All right, let's, uh, let's speak with you now. You have a very beautiful CV, which I just read out uh, proudly, proud of you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, so travelers in Nigeria are having a tough time. Domestic and international travel costs have increased lately, leading to concerns among stakeholders. How would you suggest this is tackled? Well, um, first of all, I'd like to digress a tiny little bit. Um, so I was born in England, raised in Nigeria. So I have a very good, well-balanced view of both sides. And all I'm going to say is impossible is nothing. Mm. Um, I remember the days in Nigeria where people drove cars without seatbelts, and now it's absolutely um, a crime to do so. You, you'd feel uncomfortable sitting in a car without wearing your seatbelts. And basically, with the aviation sector, if um, aviation could emulate 50% of what the telecoms and banking industry has done, I think, um, you know, Nigeria will be a different place. So essentially what we've done at the moment is shut off um, uh, an industry entirely, a tourism in industry, this sector. Um, Nigeria is geographically blessed um, with the weather, with the location, and nothing is stopping Nigeria from becoming one of the greatest aviation hubs in the world. Uh, but all these things come with hard work and um, a lot of tenacity. Um, so that's my view. So basically, impossible is nothing, is what I'm saying. Mm. Uh, Nigeria could have the best aviation sector in Africa, 100%. What's your opinion about the state of Nigeria's aviation? Um, I think my opinion really doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's where it's where we want to be that matters. <clears throat> what's historically what's gone on in the past? Um, you know, um, I, I try to stay away from political statements. Um, I think um, what's more important is um, what we do from here going forward. Um, I have noticed very very positive uh, moves in the past few weeks and. Uh, it's very optimistic, and I do hope that um, uh, the aviation sector uh, will continue to move in the in the forward direction. Um, so uh, the dilapidated, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, state of the Mutala Mohamed Airport has been addressed as we speak, because I have been following those following on those news. Um, you know, so things are beginning to hopefully move in the right direction. Let, let's look at the challenges firsthand. I mean, you are in that sector. Give us some of these challenges. Let's break it down. I know you're trying to stay away from touching some issues, some, some of the issues being raised, but you need to, you need to break it down a little bit. Um, what are these challenges that yeah. the sector so, is facing? And how um, would you say this new administration is tackling it in such a way that you're confident it's fixing it yeah so basically we have our work cut out uh in the sense that aviation itself is a, it's almost like not just an industry it's an economy in its own in its own right and where we find ourselves is in, in right now is we are not exporting aviation um and by not doing so 
money is not coming into the country. Um, and um, instead, all the foreign airlines are the ones that are coming in. And obviously, um, you know, so aviation, like very many other things, are being imported into Nigeria. So the the, the problem, the biggest problem is Forex. Mm-hmm. And where you basically don't have your own carrier, um, you're reliant on everybody else's. Um, the little reserves that is in the country has been spent on foreign airlines. And um, for example, 80% of all the traffic that goes into Dubai, 80% never stays in Dubai. They're just moving on to other destinations. Now, if you think about the, um, you know, the billions of dollars that's been generated for the uh, United Arab Emirates through people transiting, that is potentially um, money that Nigeria too could be generating for itself by having making itself a great hub. So geographically, I mentioned before, um, Nigeria is absolutely well placed um, in a position where they could, um, you know, manifest themselves into one of the best hubs in, in, in Africa. If you wanted to go from Zambia to, to Lagos, for example, it would take you almost 20 hours. And I could have gone to London and back in that time. So connectivity um, is what Nigeria needs to work on um, in that aviation sector. Well, the new minister... And it's got a really... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the new minister has uh, grilled out his five-point agenda. I'm, I'm going to read them out, uh, talking about Festus Keamo SCN. Ensure strict, number one, ensure strict compliance with safety regulations and continuous upward movement of Nigeria's rating by ICAO. Support for the growth and sustenance of local airline businesses whilst holding them to the highest international standards in the aviation industry. Number three is improvement of infrastructures in the aviation industry. Number four, development of human capacity within the industry. And number five is optimizing revenue generation for the federal government. Do you think this aptly captures the situation in the aviation industry? And do you see this um, getting us out of the woods? Um, I actually do. Um, And the fifth and final point there is where we're going to, because... Um, the state of affairs can only benefit from income generation. And the first four, like he said, um, needs to be in place before you can generate any income. Uh, development of uh, the people, uh, it's extremely, extremely important. Um, I'm working with a group of guys in the United States as we speak uh, to to uh, to implement one or two things, which um, I'll be showcasing in due, in due time, in due course. Um, so the ICAO side of things and up in the, the tier group of Nigerian, um, aviation, um, you know, it's extremely important because one of the, um, excuses why Nigeria couldn't fly into other countries is because they don't have a category one or category A, uh, safety record. Mm -hmm. And, um, that definitely does help. So uh, let's wait and see. Let's hope that um, those points um, on the face of it are, if if manifested, then definitely uh, Nigeria stands to um, gain a whole lot in the aviation sector. The UAE visa ban, has it been lifted, Captain? I don't believe so as of yesterday when I did check. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think it was. Um, so that's another thing that needs to... Um, be worked on the, the the bilateral relationship between the UAE because uh, business is best done when uh, the two parties are working amicably. Hmm. What's your vision for mm-hmm. Africa in the next five years? Um, so I see, in, like, so my motto is impossible is nothing. I've lived my life based on those principles. And so I, I'm not one of those people that think nothing is impossible. So I actually see a very great uh, Nigerian aviation sector. And uh, it would not surprise me if um, we look back to this time and, you know, we say to ourselves that was the turning point because if the telecoms and banking sector could actually do this, I see no reason why the Nigerian um, um, aviation sector can't do it. And there's there's been positive movements. Uh, the uh, 
uh, African, uh, single African air transport market. Mm. Nigeria is part of it. So about 34 countries in Africa um, have signed up to the open sky policy. And what the open sky policy does, again, is uh, help create uh, tourism, connectivity, trade, uh, generates uh, um, economic growth, and generally improves the uh, the living standards. So we are starting to see progress, albeit very slow. Uh, so my vision is that in the next five years, we will be in a much better, better, better place. Mm. So what else should we look forward to from Captain Lola Odunjere? And you've achieved some great feats. And you're a young man. And as I said, very <laughs> proud, very proud of your CV too, I am. What, what, else should we much, yeah, what else should we expect? What should we be looking forward to from you? I've got something amazing I'm cooking. Um, again, it's all in the line of um, impossible is nothing. Um, you're, you're very shortly going to find out. Mm. I can assure you. All right. So fingers crossed. Watch this space. <laughs> Watching this space. <laughs> Watching this space, Kinley. Captain Lola Odujere, so good to have you join us. Thank you very much for your time. I and, do appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, and I do share your positivity. We're looking forward to the very best. Uh, 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 the new minister um, is someone I do respect. Um, Festus Kiyamu is someone I do respect. I think he's an intelligent uh, man. And uh, I'm also watching his pace to see what he can deliver. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Madam. All right, so that's the package we have for you today. It is uh, the Technophile Tuesday edition of The Breakfast. You just listened to Captain Lola Odunjeri giving us some insight on what's happening in the aviation sector. I am Maureen Menon And on behalf of the crew, I say thank you so much. Do join us tomorrow for another episode of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning.